Welcome to Weight Loss and Wellness for Real, the podcast where people like you get the practical solutions and support you need to permanently lose the physical and mental weight so you can feel better and live the life you want in the body and mind you want. If you're looking to overcome your stress eating, overeating, binging behaviors, and move to a place of freedom with food and your body, you're in the right place. Hello, everybody. I hope you are all doing well. Today, I'm going to talk to you about a concept that is used often in therapy called reframing. So we're going to discuss how to use this strategy, the strategy of reframing for life in general, but also specifically how to use it if you're trying to change some eating or some health behaviors. In last week's podcast, I talked about why we keep doing the things we don't want to do, and how to unwind this behavior through practicing bringing the unconscious thoughts um, and stories we're telling ourselves into our consciousness. Once the unconscious habits and patterns are brought into our consciousness, once we are aware of them, we can then begin to use reframing, the technique of reframing, to make the thought changes necessary to make the behavior changes we want to make. Because remember, we always want to enter that thought line. We want to make changes at that thought line first if we're trying to change behavior because thoughts create the feelings with the sensations in our body that then motivate our behavior, that kind of trigger us into action. So we always want to hit those thoughts first. Reframing... um, you know, is something that is used quite often in therapy. I I teach my clients how to begin to shift their story or the narrative they're telling themselves that is not helpful or that is not useful to them anymore. So reframing is taking a situation or an experience and shifting how you tell your story about it. It does not mean making up something or lying or creating a fantasy that didn't happen. Um, it's not reframing is not about denying what happened or pretending something didn't happen. It's not about lying to yourself. Reframing is the process by which certain thoughts about situations are changed. It, it creates a different way of looking at a situation, a person, or a relationship by changing its meaning. So it's not about changing what's happening or what happened. Um, It's about changing, shifting perspective in order to change the meaning of what's going on. It's looking at situations um, in a different way. Reframing is a way that we can alter our perceptions and our stressors. And through this process, we relieve huge amounts of stress and create a more positive life without making changes to our circumstances that we cannot change. Because the truth is, although many of us feel like life would be easier and better if this situation were different or this person were different, the truth is we have no control often over changing some of those things. So when we don't have control in a situation to change something, this is where reframing comes in in order to bring us more peace, more contentment, better quality of life. I've worked with many clients um, to successfully lose weight or to make significant changes in their lives. And much of these changes come simply from teaching clients how to think differently along with reframing a situation or a belief. I see many people wanting to lose weight or get healthy and have the best intentions. They have the best intentions to do this. This is me too over multiple times, only to last a few days or weeks on a specific diet plan. So what what is the key to maintaining a successful diet or lifestyle that creates and maintains a healthy body, if if you can reframe your image or thoughts um, before or even alongside a new healthy eating plan, you're more likely to sustain the new habits that you want to incorporate. So again, you know, just, just reiterating how this reframing or the thinking um, even before you start a specific way of eating or moving or at least alongside of making those changes is really critical. Most people dealing with weight problems or unhealthy habits 
are usually experiencing lots of negative self-judgment in their heads. And I've got quite a few um, podcast episodes talking about this, but that negative self-judgment that goes on in our brains, um, many people are not even aware that this self-talk is going on. Uh, And this is a little bit a part of what I talked about in last week's episode on bringing the unconscious into the conscious, like gaining that awareness. The conscious or the unconscious negative self-talk is truly what prevents us from changing our lives for the better and for the long term, the lasting changes. So when, when we reframe and practice new ways of looking at things, new ways of seeing things, we can give ourselves the gift of discovering how much easier it is to get rid of the resistance holding us back from making the changes in our lives and moving forward with confidence. Really, quite often, our minds, um, they will they will put together distorted thoughts. So thinking patterns that are not necessarily completely true, and at the very least, they are unhelpful or not useful for the changes that we try to make. So here, I'm going to give a few examples to try to help you conceptualize this a little bit better. Um, here's a, here's a couple examples of how our mind might distort things. So instead of simply noticing, you know, I am overweight, the mind will generate the thought I'm so fat, which is why I'll never have friends or a partner who will love me. My extra weight makes me unworthy of being loved or accepted. So the mind kind of, you know, slips into all these judgments and all these what ifings. um, And we're often not aware that our brains are talking to us like this, you know, running these negative or unhelpful patterns of thought, thoughts. And then even if the weight, even if our weight starts to drop, these patterns of thoughts continue on and will most definitely sabotage any weight loss efforts. You know, I work a lot with my clients to identify these negative self judgments to get super clear on what exactly are these self judgments going on, um, what our brains are telling us. You know, I really want to get them um, clear on that and bring them into the consciousness, so then we can work, then work on reframing them. Here, here's a. Um, Here's a pretty common example of an unconscious or conscious belief and and thoughts that I often see that I work with a lot. So one um, one might be you are unlovable and don't belong because you are overweight. And by the way, this can be used for other goals as well, not just being overweight. If you're trying to change how you relate to others or to be less angry or more patient, etc., this works in the exact same way. So. Back to the example, you are unlovable and don't belong because you are overweight. Reframing that statement starts by asking yourself, is that really true? I hope you are finding something useful from these episodes and this podcast. And if so, please share it with someone else in your life you feel it could benefit. This podcast is also now monetized. So if you really feel you are getting a lot, from it and want to help keep it going, please go to the episode show notes. You can just scroll down from wherever you're listening. You'll see a description of the episode and then you will see it says support this podcast and then there's a link you can click on. You can click on that link and that's where you can support the podcast. Even the smallest donation, like 99 cents, helps to keep me producing the podcast. And to those of you who have donated, I really, really appreciate the support. I really do appreciate all of you listening and sharing the space with me. Again, just very thankful for all of you. Is it really, really true? Get curious about it. Get very um, non-judgmental when you answer that question, you almost have to, you know, think about it as kind of stepping outside yourself. Like, um, you know, if somewhere, someone else was listening to you make that statement, would they absolutely agree that it was for sure true? So just getting very curious, not judgmental. Um, 
If you still believe it's true, because it really may be, then you can shift the statement just a bit. You can still reframe it a bit to make it where you can move the belief to a possible change in the future. So you may absolutely believe the statement right now, but you can still reframe it and work on the brain um, by create creating a sentence or a thought where there's still a possible change in the future. So something like this, I feel and think this now about myself, but I can also be open to the possibility that I can think something different about myself as I do this work. So statements spoken out loud, especially, or written, especially, (laughs) to ourselves, like the one I just stated, is a way to get our brains to learn to accept who and what we are in the moment. We, we will never fully get rid of negative self-talk, but using reframing does begin to alter their quality, to alter um, sometimes the intensity of it. So, so that these sort of negative self-talking, um, unconscious, conscious statements no longer block or or sabotage us from achieving any goals that we have in life. Strong emotions, by the way, really um, skew how we frame reality as humans. So, you know, just think about this for a minute. Strong emotions really can skew how we see our world. If we are angry, we frame events through the lens of rage in that moment. When we feel love, we see everything as wonderful. Um, And best example there, remember falling in love for the first time? All those amazing emotions, like, you know, you feel like you're floating through the day. Everything is framed then through that emotion. When we're depressed, then neutral or even good or happy events are going to be interpreted negatively. So, you know, in therapy, when I'm coaching a client, my my goal is to be supportive and empathetic to their concerns, but I'm also there to partner with my clients to work through their issues. So when we take on their challenges, whatever they are, and I offer my client another perspective This is reframing, and this is why sometimes it's helpful to work with a therapist or a coach uh, who who is kind of, you know, knows how to do this to help you start to learn how to reframe. Sometimes it can be difficult, but the truth is you don't need, you know, a therapist or a coach either, kind of depending on where you're at and what your situation is. A lot of this you can do through self-coaching, through journaling, um, through practicing some of these techniques, um, practicing these techniques daily. Back to the emotion stuff, when I am working with a client and giving them another perspective to help them reframe, I am looking at, at the reactions that are driven from emotion in my clients and from that helping to adjust their perspective or thought patterns or habits of thoughts. The, the emotions that we feel, the thoughts that we think that create these emotions, they're often rooted in those old habit patterns of thoughts that no longer serve us. They are no longer helpful. Remember our framework for change? And this is an episode, it's one of my first episodes, and I think it's called Framework for Change. So, you know, you can go back and revisit that. But our framework for change, thoughts create feelings. Feelings come along with little, you know, sensations that pulse throughout our bodies, which then motivate our behaviors, which, um, you know, give us the momentum to behave in certain ways. When, when we work to reframe a situation by taking on a new perspective, we can adjust these patterns and eventually break them over time, leaving us feeling so much healthier and so much more in control of our own minds and brains, which brings so many more good feelings. We get to experience more and more often. It really does improve our quality of life and not to mention just ours. It really improves the quality of life of those involved with us in relationships, Um, our children, our significant others, our friends, our family. 
Okay, so reframing is often, I talked about this a little bit in the beginning, but it's often misinterpreted as taking a situation or a thought and trying to reframe it to make it positive. And if you work with me at all, you know I am not a big believer in positive thinking. Um, I'm not saying positive thinking isn't great and and can't work and and isn't um, helpful. I'm just saying I'm not a big believer in teaching it or telling people to do it because in the reality of our humanity and how we exist as humans, just thinking positive does not... It's not applicable all the time. It doesn't feel right. It it just doesn't work. So, you know, it's just, um, it's too simplistic for how we work as humans. So let me give you an example. You step on the scale and your weight has gone up two pounds since last week, even though this last week you have worked so hard. You know, you've really been into your food plan. You've followed it to a T. You've done your movement plan. You, you cut out all alcohol. You can't believe that the scale is up after all this work. And your immediate thought is, I will never lose this weight. It's not even worth it to keep going. I quit. You may think about reframing this to just saying something positive like, it's okay. I'm amazing. I'm awesome. And this doesn't matter at all. Now, if you do this and actually actually really feel that, great. But you are like one, I don't know, one in a thousand, one in a million, and you have had lots of practice with reframing. But for most of us, if we say something positive like that to ourselves in that moment, it just feels like a big lie. It doesn't work. But a reframe that might work to keep you doing what you want to do might be something less positive but more neutral. Something like, I'm really disappointed after all the work I did this past week. But I also know this happens sometimes where a body holds on to weight. I'm going to look at this last week and see if there is anything I could try changing so I end up with a loss next week. I'm not going to give up. I'm going to keep going. That reframe will keep you going and will eventually get you to your goals without having to be that fake positive to where you feel like you're lying to yourself. When you're working to reframe something, think more in neutral terms at first, not just thinking positive. Okay. So you know how I always have to give practical, um, things to do to practice. You know, I'm, I'm so, I'm very into not just giving information, but really teaching the how to do the things that I, that I present the information that I give. So here are some practical daily practice, um, to put into place this week to hone your skill at reframing. Okay. So first thing we're going to talk about three steps here, three things. So first one, awareness, Write down one of your unhelpful thoughts or situations that your brain throws up about yourself. What, what is something unhelpful that your brain keeps throwing up about you? Write it down. Second one, ask questions about the thought. Is this true? Is it really true? Ask yourself, are you catastrophizing or magnifying things? Are you thinking in all or nothing black or white? Are you what ifing or fortune telling? Are you personalizing? Are you thinking that everything negative happening around you is somehow related to you? Are you taking things too personally? Which by the way, that one happens quite a bit for me. <laughs> Re- okay. Third one then. So you've got one, two, first one's awareness. Then second one is asking questions about the thought you write, wrote down. Third one, reframe the thought, the thought about the situation. Do this by writing down an alternative shifted thought. If this is difficult for you, imagine that your best friend or a child you love just told you they were thinking the thought about themselves or the situation that you wrote down in in number one. What would you tell them? How would you frame the situation or thought for the person you love? Often this little technique will help you move into that shifted thought place to reframe your own thought. So now I'm going to go through 
um, a bunch of examples of reframed thoughts to kind of get you going. Um, And feel free to use any of these, but I would suggest speaking them out loud, writing them down. Okay, so here's an unhelpful thought. I'm always going to struggle financially. Reframed thought. Financial struggles are hard and I can make one choice today to build my savings. Unhelpful thought. I have so much to do that I will never get anything done today. Reframe thought. If I do one thing at a time, I know I can surprise myself with how much I accomplish. Unhelpful thought. I'm never going to get over my ex. Reframe thought. I am figuring out how to heal, and I know there are possibilities of finding the right relationship for me in the future. Unhelpful thought. My idea is so stupid. Reframe thought. Creativity makes me feel vulnerable, but I can still believe in my idea. While I'm open to feedback, I don't need to criticize myself. Unhelpful thought. I'm not good enough. Reframe thought. I have strengths and I have weaknesses because I'm human. Unhelpful thought, the world is falling apart. Reframe thought, with all the problems in the world, I get to figure out what part I will play in the solution. Unhelpful thought, I will never lose this weight. Reframe thought, I am figuring out how to lose this weight for good. I can keep going. Okay, so I gave you some of the ones I see most often in those I work with understand the huge power behind reframing, behind reconceptualizing. When you get good at this, and remember, to get good at this, you must practice, practice, practice. It is a skill that you are building. It's like building a muscle. You have to work out, work out, work out to build it. This is the same thing. When you do this, when you practice this, you will find so much more peace, meaning, feelings of fulfillment. It it does not mean your life becomes perfect, but it means in the tough times, you're much more equipped to manage them quickly and with continued peace while you're going through them. It also means you reach your goals and dreams so much quicker. Your thoughts matter in everything we do and getting skilled at noticing our thoughts, thinking about our thinking, and then implementing skills to shift our thinking and practicing this changes lives. This really changes lives. So I really encourage you to really practice this week. Do those three steps. Um, the awareness, write, and remember writing all this down is really important or at least speaking it out loud to yourself. But the awareness of the, the negative thought, the thought, the unhelpful thought, asking questions about the thought, and then practicing reframing the thought. I really encourage you to do this uh, daily this week and see what changes end up coming up for you. Okay, you can head over to my social media um, or website for more resources, heatherheinen.com, on Instagram at Heinen Counseling and Coaching. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. I also have a high protein recipes only page at Peak Protein Recipes on Instagram. And if you keep listening right now, you're going to get some more information on how my clients take a deeper dive on these topics with me through online programs and coaching. It's where you get the actual structured lessons, worksheets, journal prompts, support and coaching behind all this stuff I'm putting out there to lose your weight for good, improve your health, and live the life you've been dreaming about in the body you've been dreaming about. Thanks for listening. Did you know you can find a lot more help from me on my website? Go to heatherheinen.com. Heinen is spelled H-E-Y-N-E-N. And get in touch with questions on all things I offer, like online courses for overeating, weight loss, goal attainment, and also my coaching and counseling services. Mm